Good day, my fellow adventurers. Steve the Amateur Historian. I'm just standing outside my apartment waiting for my bus to arrive because I'm going way, way north today. So behind me back there, that is the Jansen Beach Mall, essentially kind of a dead mall these days. But in this same area, Jansen Beach, they also had a really massive, really popular amusement park here. Pretty much anybody who's grown up in the Portland area knows at least a little something about the big amusement park that used to be here, the big Mario, Mario, merry-go-round <laughs> that was here, that there's kind of a, an ongoing battle going on trying to get it, restore it. But as usual, I'm not here to talk to you about what everybody knows about. I'm here to talk to you about what the general public usually doesn't know about. So from the Jansen Beach area, I'm going to head due east to show you an amusement park that most of you probably have never heard of. We're now walking along uh, Tomahawk Island. It's really kind of nice, rivery community. It's the kind of place I'd almost like to retire to. When I get a little older, it's really cool. It's really quiet here. This here is Lotus Isle Park on Tomahawk Island kind of in between waterways uh, along the Columbia where Oregon borders Washington. We're still in Oregon. But what looms here, this tiny little park that stands around here. And again, I apologize. We're going to be hearing a lot of planes. The Portland International Airport is just like right over there. And we're right over their flight path. That's okay. Because I'm going to tell you a pretty crazy story about what happened right here. My apologies, this is on a very shaky tripod so I might jostle a little bit, but... While today this is just Lotus Island Park, a little park kind of goes up to the edge of the river, in reality this used to be a big amusement park. Now how did this amusement park come to be? Well I'll tell you. A couple of, I guess you'd call them shrewd businessmen, decided they wanted to pull a scheme and their whole objective was they were going to try to connive the people that ran the amusement park at Jansen Beach which was already big and well known and popular at the time they were going to try to con them into buying them out by saying hey we're going to build an amusement park right over here literally right across the island from you and we're going to steal all your business and they thought that that would scare the guys that ran Jansen Beach. The Jansen Beach guys would be like, oh, okay, we don't want you to do that. What are we gonna, What can we do to stop you guys from doing that? The Lotus Isle guys would say, well, buy us out. Make a bunch of money for nothing. Well, the whole plan backfired because the Jansen Beach people, who obviously were very confident in their ability to run an amusement park, said, fine, build your amusement park. See what we, th <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> so instead of walking away with without having to do anything with a bunch of extra money in their pocket these guys got stuck actually having to you know make this amusement park a reality so in this exact spot they built this huge elaborate amusement park they had a um, a really creepy looking uh, bumper car concession that had a big dog thing on top of it they had a huge replica of the Eiffel Tower that was that was the entrance to the park. It was a big Eiffel Tower with the Lotus Park sign. It was right up at the front of the park there where the sign is that says this is Lotus Island Park. So it was the I told you there was gonna be planes. And anyway, the park officially opened, I believe, for the 1929-1930, you know, festive summer season. And the place was a hit. People, people loved this place. It was actually tr proving to be a successful uh, business venture. But then, like with so many other tragedies, the day before the last day of the season, before they were going to shut the park down and reap their rewards, their massive roller coaster they had here threw a kid. Um, 
just rocketed him into the sky and he went flying into the river I don't know if it was here or if it was over there threw the kid right into the river and he drowned and that that incident is almost like a metaphor for the the whole existence of this park the fact that it was so elaborate it was so beautiful and it was such a it was such a like a shocking fit of luck that they ended up actually deciding to build this place. It ended up being awesome. But then the first season ended on a down note. One of the next things that they decided to do to kind of keep keep the place, keep it getting more and more elaborate is they brought in an elephant, a really well-known elephant, one of the largest elephants in the world, who was named Tusco. Now Tusco already had a bad reputation. He was known for having a temper. And he was actually being kept up in Washington where he broke free and he went on this like massive rampage. He stomped through like a town and just destroyed everything in his wake before they finally got him. I think they had to tranquilize him. And even when they shipped him up to Portland to eventually put him up to show here in Lotus Isle, he the building they put him in, he was just rampaging through there. He practically almost destroyed the building he was in. He almost got free just by, you know, ramming it with his head. So you know, the people running Lotus Isle here should have known. They should have known that bad times were ahead. And of course, you know, they put him on display. People loved it. But at one point, he broke free. And he rampaged all through this park. Caused an absurd amount of damage. Um, and, you know, and it's just things like that kept happening. The park kept just having this string of bad luck. And, you know, ultimately got to a point they couldn't recover from it. There was, I mean, there was a plane crash. There was a guy flying his commuter plane over the island. Crash landed into the park. And you know, one of the uh, lesser known aspects of this story is, and probably helped its downfall, is the guy that actually ran the place actually legitimately wanted this to work as a park. He loved how successful it was turning out to be. Well, when this child got thrown from his seat into the water and drowned, this owner committed suicide the next day. You can only assume it was in relation to what happened here at the park. And he was replaced by this guy who was essentially, you know, a hood, a swindler. And so, you know, he was looking to make money on the thing. And what's really funny is that ultimately he ended up really losing out. And kind of the final nail in the coffin you know it's still only 1932 1933 the park's only been open like three years they had built this amazing beautiful elaborate dance hall but they cut corners when they built it and you know it wasn't aerated well it would always get just steamy hot in there and one night the thing caught fire and because of the general heat and just all of that stuff, the thing just went up in just this smoky, billowing blaze. People across the river literally went outside and they could feel the heat from the fire way over here hitting them. That was Lotus Isles kind of, that was the death knell. They just, problems kept happening, they kept having to deal with property damage, and ultimately they just couldn't, they couldn't afford to keep the park open. So, they ended up filing for bankruptcy, they sold off as much stuff as they could, and that's really kind of the tragic end to Lotus Isle, a theme park that could have been something amazing for years and years to come, but ended up lasting less than five years. And now, you know, there's only one remaining element of the park that's even here, and it's not even a piece of the park. Because it's winter time and, you know, the rivers at a high level. You can't really see much of the remains. There's only one little piece sticking out of the water. Right there. That is one of many remains of the trolley bridge that brought commuters to the island. Because, you know, back in the late 20s into the 30s when this park became a reality, there was there was no, you know, road bridges here. The only way you could get to Lotus Isle was by taking the trolley that came across right here or you, you know, had to commute by boat. You know, obviously now it's the 21st century. You can get here pretty easily, but back then that was the only way to get there. You had to take a specific trolley to a specific station and take that car across the water and land right here. And you were there. This was Lotus Isle. 
So I have some summer summertime footage I took from the first time I visited here that I'll put in this video because obviously the water was lower and so you could actually see these remaining uh, you know kind of warping away pieces of wood trestle that still remain in the water from when the trolley crossed over I don't know why uh, they've just been kind of left there usually when you take down a trolley bridge you kind of take everything with you but they just left these pieces in the water which is you know it's it's a great it's a great thing to still have because um, you know there's nothing left here of the original park. There's no foundations. There's no pieces of park rides. It was just completely destroyed. And, you know, the park's been gone for over 80 years now. So, you know, it's a shame. It would be great. It's such a forgotten, quirky piece of wild Oregon history and a lot of people don't know about it. it you know it'd be great if there was still a piece of an old amusement park ride here somewhere something like that but at least we got something so i just wanted to bring you all out here to this cute little park today and show you what was once here because i bet even the people that live in this area probably don't even realize what hollowed ground this place is And on that note, everyone, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little venture through the old Lotus Isle theme park, amusement park, even though it's not here anymore. Uh, but, you know, at least we got a little sign here. I bet people come here all the time to like, Lotus Isle, what the, what does that mean? Is this, is this the Isle of the Lotuses? Um, and I actually forget, there was a specific reason why this place was named Lotus Isle, uh, but I can't remember right now. So I'll put it in here for you all to see. And uh, all that said, till next time, my fellow adventurers, this has been Steve the Amateur Historian. And I'll see you guys next time.